morning students welcome to today's physical education class today we are starting with the topic physiological factor determining component of physical fitness the topic is from unit 7 that is physiology and injuries in sports so let us begin the class physiological factors determining strength what are the physiological factors that determine strength? Number one is muscle composition. Each muscle consists of basically two types of muscle fibers. One is fast twitch fiber that is white fiber and the second is slow twitch fiber that is red fiber. The fast twitch fibers are capable to contract faster and therefore they can produce more force. On the contrary, the slow twitch fibers are not capable of contracting faster, all through they are capable of contracting for a longer duration. So it can be said that the percentage of this fiber determines the strength of a person. Next is size of the muscle. The strength of the muscle largely depends upon the size of the muscle. It is a well known fact that bigger and larger muscle can produce more force. The force produced by the same size of muscle in males and female is approximately same. But males are found to be stronger because they have larger and bigger muscle in comparison to females. So the strength is determined by the size of the muscle. Next is body weight. It is also a well known fact that the individuals who are heavier are generally stronger than the individual who are lighter. There is a positive correlation between body weight and strength among international weightlifters. The heavier weightlifters lift heavier weights. So body weight also determines the strength of an individual. So the next is intensity of nerve impulse. A muscle is composed of a number of motor units. The total force of the muscle depends on the number of contracting motor units. Whenever a strong nerve impulse from central nervous system excites more number of motor units, the muscle will contract more strongly or it can be said that the muscle will produce more force or strength. So the intensity of the nerve impulse also determines the amount of strength. Physiological factors for determining speed. So what are the physiological factors that determine the speed? First is same muscle composition. Muscle with greater percentage of fast twitch fiber contract with more speed in comparison to muscle with lower percentage of fast twitch fiber. In fact, the muscle comparison is generally determined and cannot be changed by training. Different muscle of the body have different percentage of fast twitch fiber. So different parts of the body have different speed performance. Next is explosive strength. For every quick and explosive movement, explosive strength is indispensable. For example, a quick punch in boxing cannot be delivered if the boxer lacks explosive strength. Explosive strength further depends on muscle composition, muscle size and muscle coordination. It also depends on the metabolic process. Except muscle composition, the remaining factor can be improved through training which is turn will be improve the speed for a limited extent. Flexibility. Flexibility also determines the speed to a certain extent. In fact, good flexibility allows maximum range of movement without much internal resistance. Flexibility also enables complete utilization of explosive strength. Next is biochemical reserves and metabolic power. For maximum speed performance, 
the muscle require more amount of energy at a very high rate of consumption for this purpose the atp and cp store in the muscle should be enough if atp and cp store is less in contracting muscle the muscle contraction due to insufficient energy supply becomes slow after a short time the energy supply also depends on certain enzyme which increases the metabolic power the amount of atp cp and rate of energy supply can be enhanced by training therefore it can be said that the biochemical reserves and metabolic power determine the speed physiological factors for determining flexibility first is muscle strength the muscle should have a minimum level of strength to make the movement possible especially against gravity or external force in sprint sports the legs or knees cannot be lifted to the required height or angle if the related muscle are weak in fact weak muscle can become a limiting factor for achieving higher range of movement muscle strength is highly trainable and therefore can enhance flexibility of a person next is joint structure there are various types of joint in human body some of the joint intrinsically have a greater range of motion than other for example the ball and socket joint of the shoulder has the greatest range of motion in comparison to the knee joint next is age and gender it is a well known fact that flexibility decreases with the advancement of age however human body is trainable flexibility can be enhanced with the help of training as strength and endurance are enhanced gender also determines flexibility female tend to be more flexible than males the next is internal environment internal environment of the athlete influences the flexibility for example 10 minute in a warm bath increases body temperature and flexibility whereas 10 minutes staying outside in 10 degree celsius reduces body temperature and flexibility so the next is previous injury injury to connective tissues and muscle can lead to the thickening of fibrous on the affected area fibrous tissue are less elastic and can lead to limb shortening and ultimately lead to reduced flexibility next is physiological factors determining endurance one is aerobic capacity to perform an activity continuously energy is required by the muscles which can be supplied by the presence of oxygen therefore the ability of the organism to maintain adequate supply of oxygen to the working muscles for energy liberation is important for endurance performance the aerobic capacity depends on the oxygen uptake so let us discuss what is oxygen uptake so oxygen uptake it is amount of oxygen which can be taken by the lungs from atmosphere if this amount is more than it is better from achieving higher vo2 max performance okay the oxygen intake depends on the vital capacity which further depends on the lung size number of alveoli strength of the respiratory muscles next is oxygen transport the amount of oxygen taken into the blood from lungs has to be transported to the working muscles the oxygen transport depends on the amount of oxygen which the blood has absorbed from the lungs and the ability of the circulatory system to carry this quickly to the working muscles the muscle of oxygen absorbed into the blood depends on the speed of blood flow through the lungs and on the blood hemoglobin next is oxygen uptake it is the highest rate at oxygen which can be taken up and consumed by the heart per minute the amount of oxygen 
which can be observed and consumed by the working muscle from the blood is called oxygen uptake. Next is cardiac output. The cardiac output is simply the amount of blood pumped by the heart per minute. In one minute, how much blood is pumped by the heart that we can call cardiac output. Lactic acid tolerance. The ability to tolerate higher concentration of lactic acid is a significant factor in determining anaerobic capacity. The lactic acid tolerance is important for activities that last for about 40 seconds or more. The lactic acid tolerance capacity can be improved through training, so it can help in improving endurance performance. So here are some important questions what we have studied today. So please try to solve it. Now let's have a look what we have studied today. Number one physiological factor for determining strength. So we studied the factor which determines the strength. Physiological factor for determining speed. Physiological factor for determining flexibility. Physiological factors determining endurance. And last we studied the important questions. With this we came to the end of this class thanks for joining the class if you like the video please subscribe the channel for upcoming videos